Hello there, me hearties, and welcome back to another production by Heart Scales. I am Trinity Hart, and today I'm here to talk about snake supplements. Again. I am not a veterinarian, and I am not an exotic nutritionist. I am a certified pet nutritionist for canines, felines, and some small pets, and I'm putting my nutrition education and research training to use for finding the best diet for my pet snakes and then sharing what I know and learn along the way. In Snake Supplements 101, I introduced you to the idea of snake supplements, talked a bit about why they're even necessary, as well as some factors to consider when choosing an appropriate supplement for our pet snakes, giving real-life examples. Today, in Snake Supplements 102 Part 1, I'm going to explain why calcium is such a big deal, when to include it in our snake supplements if it's needed, then I'll start delving into the other ingredients commonly found in reptile vitamins, which are amino acids, and I'll explain why they're important as well as why they tend to be included in many of these supplements. As time goes on, I may change some of my views, and I consider that a good thing because we shouldn't stand rigid against the tide of new information. If something comes to light that I should pay attention to, I will. And considering the extremely volatile nature of nutritional science, it's not a matter of if, but when new information will come along that will have me reconsidering certain viewpoints. So I cannot emphasize enough the importance of continued study even long after you've gotten your pet snake and remaining open to new data and resulting husbandry practices. But all we can do right this moment is work with what we know currently. So let's get started. There are over 4 million households in the United States with at least one pet reptile. And according to reptile industry statistics from gitnux.org, the reptile industry is estimated to grow by at least 6% globally by 2025. And with that, there are probably nearly as many different approaches to and opinions on proper husbandry for pet reptiles. But some objective facts do exist. For one, calcium deficiencies are common. Nutritional secondary hyperparathyroidism, more commonly known as metabolic bone disease or MBD, is all too often a sad scenario that exotic vets and keepers encounter. For two, it's an objective fact that most cases of MBD are completely preventable. It can even be treatable when it's intervened upon early enough. Ensuring our reptiles receive not only enough calcium, but enough vitamin D3, which works very closely with calcium and is required for the absorption of calcium into the body and its bones, is essential in preventing conditions like metabolic bone disease. What does this mean for our pet snakes? Well, typically, our snakes are eating whole prey diets, mostly mice and rats. And whole prey diets already have a good calcium to phosphorus ratio because your snake is ingesting the bones of these rodents. Bones are the best source of natural calcium and phosphorus, and they also naturally provide a good calcium to phosphorus ratio. So while MBD is quite common in reptiles like leopard geckos and chameleons, it's actually pretty rare in snakes. On the flip side, leos and chameleons eat mainly invertebrates aka no bones. With few exceptions, like black soldier fly larvae, this means the calcium to phosphorus ratio of their diet is suboptimal. So supplementation may be required. So why bring up snakes at all when talking about calcium supplements? A lot of people are concerned about MBD because of its widespread appearance in reptiles as a whole. Since calcium is an oft-used and very widely available supplement for reptiles, it's important that I address calcium before delving further into snake supplementation. And there is still some risk, like when our snakes are very young or gravid, or when they're fed an improper diet like animal parts instead of whole prey. During the times our young pet snakes are developing, or our breeding female snakes are building eggs, they are at most risk of hypocalcemia, and that's exactly when we tend to be feeding them a diet that is lacking in appropriate amounts and ratios of calcium. One way to combat improper or incomplete diet during these times is supplementation. So that's why providing not only your insectivores, but your carnivores, like your pet snake, with supplements that include calcium while they're young and doing most of their growing or while they're preparing to have babies can be so beneficial. So now you know a decent amount about calcium for now and why it may or may not be beneficial for your snake. What about the other ingredients found in snake supplements? Let's take a look at a few examples. 
We'll start with RepCal's Herptivite multivitamin, one of the most popular supplements on the market. The ingredient deck on the back starts with a large list of amino acids. Those are glutamic acid, aspartic acid, leucine, valine, serine, lysine, alanine, phenylalanine, arginine, isoleucine, threonine, tyrosine, methionine, proline, glycine, cysteine, and histidine. Say that 10 times fast. These are what's referred to as free amino acids. Normally, protein is found intact or whole in animal products, i.e. meat. They are bonded together and form long chains, which create proteins. Free amino acids are synthesized and singular. They have no bonds and are not connected to each other, i.e. free. Some studies show that free amino acid supplements are absorbed more rapidly by the body, but there's no evidence that they are used more readily or are in any way more efficient than protein obtained through food. Either way, amino acids are required for the body to synthesize protein. And intact protein, which is meat, not only provides a natural, readily consumed source of amino acids, but provides it in massive quantities which are difficult to match in supplement form. The benefit of providing free-form amino acids comes into play when protein and therefore amino acids aren't plentiful or the absorption of them is in some way compromised. So what is the benefit of including these free amino acids in this formula? Let's get a quick rundown on these amino acids and why including them could be necessary in our snake's diet. You may have heard it a thousand times before, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. That's not just to say the protein that we get in our diets, that also applies to our muscles, organs, tendons, and tissues. Protein is also used to repair and maintain these parts of our bodies. That's why when we are developing and also when we're very old, we need a decent amount of protein intake so that we can both build and then maintain our muscles and our organs. Ever seen a senior animal who seemed to waste away as they got older? That's because we lose muscle mass as we age. Muscles are where protein in our bodies is stored. So since protein is also what is used to repair those muscles, any animal can lose a lot of lean muscle over time, especially when eating a diet that is low in protein. Also, about half of a cell's dry weight is protein. Protein is used for the very structure of our bodies and to make materials like keratin, what your snake's scales are made out of, collagen, and elastin. It's also used to make hormones and enzymes. Needless to say, protein is an extremely critical nutrient for any animal, and amino acids serve different and a myriad of functions. Glutamic acid, the first ingredient we saw on Herptivite's ingredient deck, is actually used in protein biosynthesis in the body. It's an alpha amino acid that is required for making more proteins, which ultimately helps with metabolism, brain, and cardiac functions. Aspartic acid assists in energy production and sending chemical signals throughout the nervous system. Leucine regulates the other amino acids in the body, protein synthesis, insulin levels, and helps in the growth and repair of the bones, skin, and muscles. Valine actually makes up about 70% of the amino acids found in bodily proteins. It's required for tissue repair and muscle metabolism. Serine is necessary for producing proteins in the body, including enzymes and muscle tissue, as well as the metabolism of fats. Lysine helps regulate cell metabolism and is found in the body's collagen. Arginine plays a key role in ridding the body of ammonia, which is a byproduct of metabolizing protein, incredibly important for any and all meat-eating animals. I think you get the idea. Providing your snake with a good quantity of all the amino acids used by our bodies is extremely beneficial. There are 20 of these amino acids. Actually, there's a couple more proteogenic amino acids and hundreds of amino acids in total called non-proteogenic amino acids or NPAAs, but those have nothing to do with sustaining the bodies of animals. However, all of the 20 used in our bodies are important for us and our pets to thrive. Depending on the species, some amino acids are categorized as essential, meaning simply that the body of that species cannot manufacture that amino acid and it's therefore essential to include in the diet, Non-essential amino acids are the ones that the body can manufacture and therefore are less imperative to keep in the diet. This terminology, however, of essential and non-essential is, strictly speaking, scientific terms. In colloquial terms, all amino acids are essential, and it's still a very good idea for the complete array of amino acids to be provided in the diet. That's because the manufacturing of those non-essential amino acids in our body is accomplished by breaking down the essential amino acids coming from our diet, which means that more essential amino acids must be provided in the diet to make up for the lack of non-essential amino acids in the diet. And also the body must work harder for less gain. 
It's akin to someone saying, hey, I don't need to spend money on firewood, I can just burn the table and chairs. Or my couch. Eventually, you're gonna run out of furniture to burn and the whole house may go down as you continue to feed that fire. Some studies show that irradiation treatments, which are commonly used on feeder animals sold for our reptiles, damages the molecular structure of protein. Similar to cooking, it causes unfolding of the protein to a point where the body may not recognize part of it as protein and is therefore rendered unusable by the body. Essentially, the more processed a food is, the less nutrition it provides. Research also shows that the amino acids histidine, leucine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, valine, aspartate, and cysteine are sensitive to freezing, and physical and chemical changes occur in multiple ways from cold temperatures. This is called denaturation, and it essentially means the protein is degraded and its nutrients greatly decreased. Oxidation is also an effect of denaturation, meaning the longer meat is stored, the more likely it will develop carbonyl compounds, which are markers of increased likelihood of disease. There are studies that link protein oxidation to gastric cancer, breast cancer, and ulcerative colitis. We also know that freezing results in a relatively high loss of vitamin B6 and vitamin C. What all this means is that freezing and irradiating meat, such as the mice and rats that we feed our animals, damages the nutrients within and over time, significant loss of amino acids and vitamins can lead to deficiencies that affect the quality of life and even the lifespan of our pet snakes. The reason why free amino acids are included in multivitamins like this is to help make up for some of that loss, inevitably coming from frozen and irradiated feeders, and help ensure our snakes are getting what they need to thrive. So now we've talked a bit about calcium, one of the biggest concerns reptile keepers have that often initially turns them on to supplementation, and when we may actually want to provide it to our snakes. And we've talked at length about amino acids, a common set of ingredients in reptile multivitamins, and why that can be beneficial for our pet snakes. In part two of Snake Supplements 102, we'll get to some of the other ingredients commonly found in reptile multivitamins, and I'll be sharing some of my personal favorites. Stay tuned for more reptile and educational content, and in the meantime, if you wish to help support the research and content that Heart Skills provides, then don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and acquire snakes. Thank you so much for watching and learning with me. Bye bye now. When I, th <laughs> I thought uh, Hognose feeding antics were funny. I don't know what he he's dragging it all through. <laughs>